So, the first week of school, we learned about functions and relations. We said that a function is like a machine. So we all took the time to draw this machine and we put in the number one and we got out, let me actually do this. We put in the number one and we got out the number two. Now, where did we put in this one? We put it in right here into the X spot. So three times one is three, take away one gives you the two. So this is an actual function and a function is like a machine. There's an input and there's an output. You put in a number, you get out an answer. So the next number was, we plugged in a four, this is from a long time ago, we plug in a four into the machine, and you think about that, you have a three times four. Now where are we plugging it in? We're plugging it into the X spot. That's why these numbers are called, they're called inputs because you're putting them in, but they're also called X values because you put them into the X position, right? So when you plug in four, you plug it in right into the X, it's gonna be three times four, that's 12, and 12 take away one, 12 take away one is 11. And that's how we get an 11 as an output for the input four. I hope this uh, sounds familiar. I hope this, this makes sense to you guys. Um, so the input values are obviously called uh, inputs because you put them in. They're also called X values because you put them into the X spot. And they're also called domain values, right? That's kind of, there's really no trick to that. The only uh, advice I could give is that, remember, the domain is what's going in. That's like alphabetical order. The D comes before the R. So the domain goes in, the range comes out. So anyway, we could take the 7 and plug in this 7 into the X spot, and you go 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. Take away 1, you'll get 20 as an output. So that's how we get the 20 out here as an output for the input of seven. Does this make sense to you guys? Inputs and outputs, yeah? So the main idea here is that the input gives you on a function, the input gives you a specific output, okay? So you plug in a number, you get out an answer. Plug in a number, get out an answer. If you plug in the same number twice, you better get out that same answer twice. Does that make sense? So if I plug in a 10 and get out a 29, right? Plug in a 10, get out a 29. If I plug in a 10 again, well, three times 10 is 30. Take away one is 29 again. So a function's like a machine. If you plug in a value, you get out an answer. If you plug in the same value, you better get out that same answer. If you have some dough, you plug it in and you pull out a donut and you take some dough, put it in, you get out a donut and you take some dough and you put it in, you get out a tortilla, that machine's broken, right? So the idea for a function machine is that for each input, there's exactly one output. Yay? For each input, there's exactly one output. And that's what we're talking about over here on these notes. Everything I just described is right there. And there's also a vertical line test to, do the, uh, to find out if it's a function or a relation. Now, let's just move on down here. By the way, um, if you're at home, you probably want to pause and try to label these guys one through 10 as either a function or just a relation. So hit pause, but I'm just gonna go on to the explanation. On number one, uh, we have the X values right here. These X values are what? They're inputs. So I put in a five into the function machine and the Y is an output. So if I put in a five, I get out a four. I put in a two, I get out a one. I put in a zero, I get out a negative two. I put in a negative three, I get out a one. Do I ever plug in the same number twice and get out different answers? Do I ever plug in the same number twice and get out different answers? Yeah, no, I don't. So this is definitely a function. So everybody should label that as a function. Everybody look at number two. Is this one a function or is it just a relation? It is just a relation. Again, think about it. I plug in a seven, I get out of three. I plug in a six, I get out of negative one. I plug in a four, I get out of two. But then again, I plug in a four again and I get out of five. That machine is broken. So this is not a function. A function is like a machine that works. This is like a broken machine. So all we could do is call it just a relation. You could say JR 
Or you could just say R, just a relation. Moving on. X and Y tables, same concept. You have your inputs, you have your outputs. Plug in a 3, get out of 7. Plug in a negative 1, get out of 1. Is this a function or just a relation? Relation. This machine's broken. What makes it a broken machine? The 3 gave you a 7, and you plugged in 3 again. You're supposed to get out a 7, and that's not a 7, that's a 5. So this is a messed up machine. So you would just say it's just a relation for number 3. Let's move on number 4. Now, number four, we're going to use a vertical line test. So, here's my vertical line. And what I'm going to do is run my vertical line from left to right. And if at any point it touches my graph at more than one point, then I know that it fails the vertical line test. So, at any point, this graph actually touches it at two points. Okay? It touches it, uh, touches it right here and right here. So that fails the vertical line test, so it's not a function, it's just a relation. You guys got that? What does this really mean in terms of numeric values? It means that for the input of 1, remember inputs are x values, so here's your x-axis. For your input of 1, you have two different outputs. You have the output uh, 1 and you also have the output negative 1. Think about that. You have a coordinate right here and a coordinate right here. What is this coordinate above? That coordinate is 1, 1. 1, 1. What coordinate is the one down there? It's 1, negative 1. So, if you think about it numerically in terms of the function machine, you plug in a 1, you get out a 1. You plug in the 1 again, you're supposed to get out a 1 again, but this time you get out a negative 1. But instead of thinking of the numbers and all that stuff, the shortcut is to use the vertical line test and run your vertical line, uh, whoa, run your vertical line um, from left to right, and if it touches your graph at more than one point, that means that you have more than one output for a single input. Let's move on to number five. Is this a function or just a relation? You could think of it numerically. You could put coordinates like negative one, two, three, one. This is negative three, one. This is negative two, two. This is negative 1, negative 2. You can write coordinates, but that would be a waste of time because all you got to do is use the vertical line test to see if you're getting more than one output for your single input. So here's my vertical line. Does it, does it touch the coordinates at more than one point right there? No? How about now? No? How about now? How about now? What? Yeah, right there. It's touching two points. What does this mean, really? It means that for the input 2, I get two different outputs. The output positive 2 and negative 1. Does that make sense? So this is not a function. This is just a relation. So let's move on to the next one. I might as well keep that vertical line right there. Does this graph ever touch my vertical line at more than one point? No, it does not. So what do I say this is? Is it a function or just a relation? Function. It's definitely a function. Okay? Let's move on. The next one. Is it good so far? Good so far? Good so far? Good so far. So what is this? It's a function because it never touches my vertical line at more than one point. Let's move on. What do you guys think? Function or just a relation? That's definitely a function. I mean, look, tell me when to stop. Stop. Does it touch at more than one point? No. Does it touch at more than one point? No. Now, if for some crazy reason you had this type of graph, then yeah, that would no longer be a function. It would just be a relation because it would touch my vertical line at more than one point. But it's not. Right now we really have just a parabola that is a function. Okay? So it's definitely a function right here. Let's move on. Let's go to, oh, no more graphs. We just have the final uh, X and Y tables. Let me get this guy out of the way here. So if we look at this one, uh, is this a function or a relation? Definitely a function. And this guy, function or relation? Function. 
And you guys are probably thinking, why, why do you know it's functional? Well, I never plug in a four two times and get out different answers. I never plug in an input twice and get out different answers. Okay, so that was the review. Before we uh, move on to the actual notes for this section, I'm actually going to just uh, end the video here and start up on video two in a little while.